Hey, it's Mark Lepore, Pro Shaper Sheet Metal in Charlton, Massachusetts, and we finally got Ray to get an ultrasonic cleaner. Now, Ray always has me taking things like this, all this grease, I gotta clean it out with lacquer thinner by hand and brush it and everything. But now I got kind of a watered sandblaster, because I hate sandblasting, but I kind of convinced him to do this. So let's check it out. So this thing definitely takes cleaning to the next level. It's the Vivor 15 liter ultrasonic cleaner. Now, if you notice that uh, prices back maybe five years ago, uh, the cost of this would probably be about 1800, 15 to 1800 for about a 15 liter. This thing is ginormous. Here's the inside just for a quick look. Awesome basket. Even comes with a little jewelry basket, some tape that I was supposed to put on that hose, but I like to live dangerously. And that's just an awesome drain. This is the one thing I actually really love about this is I don't have to pick it up and dump it into a bucket because that is uh, kind of crazy. This way, all I got to do is just open up the spigot, let it all drain out. Probably got a little bit of stuff at the bottom, um, but you can just wipe that off with a paper towel. And depending on the cleaning solution you use, you can put all different, you can clean pretty much anything in here. If you're going to use jewelry, I highly recommend, um, if you know anything about stones, don't do any of the soft stones like opal, turquoise, emerald, amber, pearl, or coral, or even if the stone is cracked, but it's a diamond, because this could just make things completely worse. Now, a lot of the stuff can just use uh, Dawn detergent and some water. If you fill this up, you don't want to run it dry. You want at least three inches of water, but I highly recommend you go to the top of the line. Inside, it holds about 13 and a half liters once the basket is in place. Um, basket's nice for holding like larger pieces like that, uh, carburetor, uh, anything smaller, jewelry, anything like that. They got this cool little, I call it the little tea bag thing that you can just put it in there and then just drop on the side. Now, again, you want, you don't want to run this dry because you could just break all the transducers. The front control panel is digital. Uh, the timer only goes up to 30 minutes and the heat settings are in Celsius. Um, but you got the start stop buttons, the on off temperature up, temperature down and the time up and down. Now in the back is where you turn it on. And then you got a heater that goes up to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. They set it in Celsius. Um, and the timer goes from zero to 30 minutes. They do recommend that, uh, depending on what kind of cleaning solution you use, you want to pay attention. If it's got any aluminum in it, you don't want to let it, uh, stay in there too long because chances are you could pit the aluminum and we're not about to do that. So what I'm actually going to do is just see how well it cleans using Dawn dish soap and uh, water. So I almost have it about full to the top. I'm going to show you right here. Have it almost filled to the top. Now you want to make sure you don't run this without water because you could just kill all the transducers. Um, minimum you want to set that at about three inches from the bottom with water. Um, maximum, you want to go up to that line right there, that groove. Now, power-wise, it runs at about 360 watts ultrasonic and 400 watts heating. Uh, again, it has, I'm not sure if I said this, but it has six transducers, which is actually twice as much as uh, normal or smaller ultrasonic cleaners. So you get a more even cleaning uh, much faster. Now, the recommendation, uh, if you're using Dawn dish soap, you want about one tablespoon for every five milliliters. So if this is 15, you want about three tablespoons. I don't have a tablespoon on me, so I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna say it's about three. Eh, that's about three. Gonna add a little bit more water because I want that going to the top. To at least at the top of the basket. And now I'm gonna take Bob's carburetor and then these little, pla uh, these other like little sprockets I have, I just found them on a shelf somewhere. So, Ray, if I mess these up, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just gonna add them right in there. Put that in. So that it's all submerged. I'm probably just gonna top it off with a little bit more water. Hang on one second. So as you can see, the parts are completely submerged. Um, it's not running running yet um, you could tell with the digital readouts right next to the numbers there are two on lights uh, as long as those aren't on you're okay <laughs> if they are on you just kind of want to pay attention to how long you keep it in again the digital readout is 30 minutes max but you don't want to leave parts sitting in there especially if they got aluminum because it can cause pitting 
So I'm just going to be very careful with this. I'll probably do it in about 15 minutes and then see what happens. We're going to give a quick science breakdown. Now how this machine works is it creates high frequency sound waves in the tank. And those sound waves form microscopic bubbles that collapse against the surface of whatever you, you have in here. Um, again, we have the carburetor. It blasts away dirt, carbon, grease, and residue. More so depending on what kind of solution you actually have. Um, and this process is actually called cavitation. And it's extremely effective. And that's why ultrasonic cleaners, they're used in labs, gun shops, jewelry stores, and machine shops. I actually saw a guy use uh, his spent brass shell casings and he'd put it in here before he'd uh, refill them again. I thought that was actually really cool. The only thing with this is I know that when you turn it on, the ultrasonic frequency can kind of mess up with the camera or the audio, but I'm just gonna turn it on, see what happens right now. And then I might just edit the audio so that it's kicked off, but I wanted you to hear it. So here we go, we gotta get set for 20 minutes. We got. We make sure that everything's um, below the water. There's nothing above. It's covering the top of the basket, so we're good. Now we're just gonna turn it on. We got it set for 20. There we go. Now I don't know if you can hear that. I'm gonna put on my headset for a minute. Hang on one second. Yeah, I can hear that coming through. I'm gonna probably back it up just a little bit. Maybe that gets a little easier. Um, but yeah. I'm told um, it's around 90 decibels. It just sounds like a weird washing machine or dishwasher that's um, using like high jets. It's not too bad. I'd recommend this probably in the basement. Right now we got a 20,000 square foot shop so it doesn't bother anybody. I got my boss, he's asleep. But now let's take a look at what it's actually doing. And you can see those bubbles get a little bit greater but yeah it's uh you can see it's really working a little bit of suds up top you can even see the water is a different color right now it's it's definitely working and that's just with dawn soap and water all right everything's off you can hear it's quiet except gr brian uh, grinding in the background i'm sorry for that i'm just gonna make sure i turn that off and now let's see what happens without the bubbles. Okay, I actually didn't let it cool off. I just really wanted to get hooks because I wanted to take the basket out. I actually did a fairly decent job. Could have probably put it in longer, uh, maybe 10 minutes longer. I'm going to wash this off with water right now. That's gorgeous. Even got some of that glue or wax off uh, over here. It didn't. Of course, it's Dawn in hot water, so it's not going to mess with the aluminum. Once you clean them, you want to use an air gun um, and, and just really get in every nook and cranny in here. So you don't want any flash rust. Okay, I'm not really sure that you can see how cleaned up. I mean, again, it was just Dawn soap because I'm not messing up Bob's carburetor. But like, this thing was caked with grease. And so were these. Now all I see is just, you know rust because these things have been sitting on a shelf and it only takes a little bit to get some a uh, little rust on it but you could take that off with oh god i use rust 911 i love that stuff but it didn't damage any of the aluminum everything looks good except that rubber gasket but i mean that was let's be real 70 years old that thing was already cracked it was just covered with grease um that looks good like up it, everything looks beautiful on this it could do a better job if I had a better solution. Again, I will mess with everything else. I'm not going to mess with other people's stuff. With my carburetor, I'd put gasoline in the thing and I'd light it on fire. I don't care. Uh, you could see it is... I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's still steaming. So I'm just going to give that another... Well, probably another 15 minutes. And then we'll go from there. All right. Now for my favorite part, we're going to... I'm gonna go slow, but just because I didn't put the tape on the threads over here, so it may leak out. If it does, I'm just gonna unhook this and do it off the side, but let's see her go. I'm, I made sure I got it all unplugged and everything. The power's turned off, so. Yeah, there's a little leak. But my God, look at this. Come on. I don't have to lift that darn thing up. It would have gotten all over the floor. 
This water is really dirty. Not so much stuff. It probably all drained out into the bucket. But, um, I mean, it's not too bad. So let me just wipe that down and give you my final results. So yes, Ray said, Mark, you're an idiot. There is no aluminum on that carburetor. I said, I don't know. I don't want to do it because it's Bob's. And he said, no, no, put it in. Just use the degreaser. I said, okay, we're going to try. We're going to see what, what it does. I'm going to turn this on, heat this up. Going to keep the same, whoop. we're going to keep the same temperature and same time, 20 minutes. Set at 40 right now. All right, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. All right, so it's at uh, 65 degrees Celsius. I'll have to put in what it is in Fahrenheit after I edit this video. We're going to put in that uh, carburetor a second time. The first time was just a real cleaning from uh, the dawn in the water. And then we got these plates and a bucket of bolts and springs and stuff that I'm going to leave in that bucket inside the ultrasonics. I want to see what it does. I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to do it again, same 20 minutes. Uh, temperature is still on. Yeah. All right, again, you can hear that. We're going to back up a little bit. I don't want it to interfere with the camera or the microphone. And that's it, just counting down. I will see you guys back here in another 19 minutes, 40 seconds. All right, it just finished. You can see the steam coming off of that. Very cloudy. That's okay. And all the parts are in there. Let's take them out without burning ourselves. All right, so that's what it looks like now. It's too hot to touch. I'm gonna to go wash those off with water right now. All right, so there were the bolts. Uh, those things cleaned up fantastic. All you see right now is just um, the rust that's been on there for, I don't know, 30 years or so. Same thing with those brackets, but here's where the um, that carburetor shined up a lot more. Ray, Ray thinks, it's like, all right, it actually, it cleaned it pretty well. What he wants to do now is he wants to put Rust 911 in there. And he wants me to put those pieces in. Now, Rust 911 usually takes hmm, several hours to 24 hours. I'm just going to put it in for 30 minutes. I don't think I'm going to heat it up as much. I'll figure that out in a second. But, yeah, we're going to do one more run. We're going to put all that stuff in with or a small piece of brass and maybe the carburetor on the small thing of Rust 911 solution. See what happens. All right, we got this filled up with the Rust 911 solution. It's one quart for five gallons, but I did one quart for two and a half gallons. Don't tell Ray, he'll never see this. Um, then I'm the, uh, the brackets that we all cleaned got some serious rust on them. Now, again, I let this sit in Rust 911 solution for about 24 hours or so. I'm going to crank this up to 30 minutes. That's as, uh, the time that's as high as the time will go. I'm going to put that those in there. And I'm not going to do it to 65 uh, degrees Celsius. And I have a whole bunch of brass that we're going to put in there. I just wanted to see how it, I wanted to see how uh, Rust 911 actually does with it. Just going to use the rusty brackets and the brass. Move that out of the way. Ooh, that's nice and warm. All right. So you see it in there? We'll see how it looks in about 30 minutes. I'm going to keep it at about 40. I'm going to turn off the heater. I'm going to turn off the heater and keep it at about 46 degrees uh, Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but uh, that looks good enough to me. I'm going to up you 30 minutes, move everything out of the way, cover it up, and we'll see what happens. All right, and we are finished. Of course, raising the background, cutting up some uh, stainless steel, but that's what the water looks like right now. It's uh, very dark. Well, it's not water. It's the Rust 911 solution and everything. Usually gets that way after about 24 or 48 hours when I dump stuff. So let's just take a look. Okay, so I 
Don't know if you remember how rusted these things were. It's a little bit of surface uh, and just discoloration, really. But Rust 911 for 30 minutes in uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I probably had that in a weird location, but that was covered in rust, and now it's just a little bit. If I soak that, if I just soak it in there for 30 minutes, it should be good. Um, then here's all the brass, and I don't know if there's any copper. It's the only one that looks a little off, but I don't think it's stuff either. I think it's just solder, but those look great. Look at those. I'm happy. So that was Russ 911 for 30 minutes. I'm sure if you did an hour, you'd get everything good. And this is the all-encompassing review. We used Dawn Soap. We used the Zeps Citrus and then Rush 911. Um, I think they all did their jobs perfectly. Depending on what kind of solution you use is depending on what kind of results you get. And that's really it. it. It all depends on the solution. This thing's doing its job perfectly. I know a lot of people are upset. They want to see where we are with the Alpha. But again, this is a working shop, guys. And when we get big jobs in, we have to kind of do those first. We greatly appreciate your uh, your patience and your comments and likes on all our other videos. And I told Ray I wanted to keep the channel going. So doing the only thing I know how to do is tool reviews. Because um, if anything with work, it's just impossible to have one person doing the camera and trying to get all the angles right. This is much easier. Static shot. Put everything in. Push the button. Walk away. So that's all we got. This is Mark from Pro Shaper Sheet Metal in Charlton, Massachusetts. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.